Here is row two of the hexagon. I finished row one by slip stitching on top of the chain three, and now I'm going to slip stitch the rest of the way until I hit my first chain two gap. Once I'm at the gap or my first corner, I'm going to chain three again for my first stitch of round three, and then I'm going to add two more double crochet for my first cluster of three double crochet for round two. Then I'm going to chain two for the corner and then add three more double crochet. Once I have that, I'm going to chain one and then put three more double crochet and then another chain two and then three more double crochet and that'll be my second corner. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around. And that's essentially it for round two. You're just putting a cluster of three double crochet and then two chains and then three more double crochet into each gap all the way around. And then when you get back to the first stitch, you're just going to slip stitch on top of that chain three and that'll be the end of row two. In my last video, I talked about how you can adjust the number of corners you do to adjust the number of sides. And for this one, I want to talk about the different color options you have with this. So this is a really good project to get started with color work if you're looking into that. Mostly because you can make some really awesome designs with it and I'm a firm believer that when you're starting a new skill It needs to be something simple enough so you can finish it because that sense of accomplishment is going to motivate you to keep going But with that said the most common thing that I've seen with granny squares that are more than four sides is a sunflower And then the second row or third row you can change to a yellow or a burnt orange or whatever you like I've also seen it done with daisies, which I think is really cute, but you use a yellow color on the inside and then for the second row you would use a white color or for the rest of it. And then once you sew all those little squares together, you get this really really cool looking blanket that looks like a draped flower blanket. And then from there, I'm going to make some videos on how to turn your circle, because we've been working in the round, how to turn your circle into a tube. But for now, this is it, and if you want to stick around and watch the rest of the video, you're very welcome to. If not, uh, you can go ahead and go to the comments for row three.